Hi, it's Brian Goulet of the Goulet Pen Company and InkNouveau.com. Today's video is a continuation of my Fountain Pen 101 series, talking specifically about pen cleaning and maintenance. I get asked questions all the time about how to maintain pens, and I think it's probably a pretty overlooked area uh, of fountain pen usage. So I think that new and experienced fountain pen users alike will benefit from some of the stuff I have in this video. Now, of course, every pen manufacturer will probably have their own recommendations about how you should clean things, and you should always uh, try to abide by those for your specific pens. But what I'm going to cover here is a pretty good general rule for most pens. At least you can uh, kind of take it for what it's worth. It's, it's all my opinion on how it should be done, but uh, it should be able to help you out at least in some fashion. So why exactly does a fountain pen need to be maintained? Well, if you're coming from the ballpoint or roller pen world, you're not really used to having to do a lot of pen maintenance. And the main reason is because they have these cartridges. And you use it up, and once the cartridge is dry or doesn't function properly anymore, you throw it out, you get a new cartridge, you plop it in, you keep on going. There really is no regular maintenance that has to happen. With a fountain pen, it's different because you've got one pen, it's something that's meant to be used over and over again for upwards of 100 years or more. So it has to be maintained because otherwise it's going to wear and it's going to clog up in things over time. And uh, the main cause of this is really because you have paper, you have a pen, and the metal nib, when you're writing on the paper, you're actually creating a very small electrostatic charge between the metal and the paper. It's not really enough for you to see anything, but there is very, very minute pieces of dust, paper fibers, etc. that are actually attracted to the nib over time as you're writing with the pen. So even with regular pen filling, there are fibers and things like that that are going to build up inside your feed channel. It's a very small part. If you've seen my previous Fountain Pen 101 videos, you know what the feed channel is, but it's this very small slit that's cut into the feed where the ink draws from. And it really doesn't take a whole lot of clogging to happen to impede the ink flow here. So if you don't have a properly cleaned ink channel, that is going to cause you some major problems with the flow of your ink. That is the main reason why pens need to be cleaned regularly. The other one, obviously, is if you're changing colors and you have old ink left in your pen, it can affect the color as well. As far as what kind of regular maintenance schedule you should be on for your pens, it's kind of going to vary a little bit based on you know the type of ink that you're using, uh, how much you're using the pen, how well the pen you know keeps itself sealed up, does the ink tend to dry out on the pen, that kind of thing. So it's going to vary a bit, but in general, I think it's pretty safe to say that if you're regularly using a pen with the same ink in it, and you're just kind of refilling the ink and going on uh, every two to four weeks you'll probably want to do just a regular water flushing. You don't need a real thorough deep clean or anything, but you, you know, regular flushing will, will really benefit you. Um, if you're changing ink colors, you want to do a full treatment, not just because the color could be different, but if you're dealing with different um, ink brands, you can have different properties going on, and some of the chemicals are not so compatible from one brand to another. So if you have residual ink left over from a previous ink color, it could mix in, um, in a very extreme case, you could end up with some clogging issues just due to the inks mixing um, if the pen's not cleaned out thoroughly. Now the exception to the, the pen maintenance, um, especially when you're dealing with inks, is pigmented inks. I have some here, Platinum and Sailor, they're both Japanese companies. They make some inks that are pigment, excuse me, they make some inks that are pigment based. You've got um, Sailor has what's called their Nano inks, or their Seibuku and Kiwaguro, and Platinum has their Carbon and Pigmented inks. Um, now, these ones are, aside from being more expensive, they actually have microfine pigments in the ink themselves. The reason for that, it's actually designed originally for brush pens. Now, brush pens work a little differently. They don't require the same flow as in a fountain pen. And uh, when you're using these inks in a fountain pen, it can be done. But if it dries up in the pen, you can get some clogging because those pigments have a harder time um, you know, staying clean in the, the very small feed channel in the fountain pen. 
uh, as, as regular inks do. So if you're using these um, pigment-based inks, it can be done successfully, but you're going to want to bump up your cleaning schedule to every like three to seven days. And you definitely don't ever want to let your pens dry out with this ink in there because it'll be really, really tough to clean out. Now, most fountain pen inks are, uh, you know, good for fountain pens. They're usually advertised as fountain pen inks, but uh, pretty much if you go with any, uh, you're, you're safe going with any uh, pen maker that makes their own inks, like Lamy, Pilot, Schaefer, Waterman, etc. Um, there are some boutique brands such as Noodlers, uh, Dymene, J.R. Bond, some, some like that, that make uh, fountain pen inks, but not any pens. So, you know, I don't want you to be paranoid about which inks you should choose to put in your pens. Everything we have at GoulaidPens.com is fountain pen friendly, and it's really not too hard to usually find out whether something is or isn't. A little bit of searching in blogs and forums and stuff, and you'll learn which brands are good or not. I would stay away specifically from anything that's advertised as drawing ink, calligraphy ink, lawyer ink, um, or or uh, India ink because those are usually shellac based and those will really cause you some serious problems into the pen to the point where if it dries up in that feed you may not be able to clean it out and it may ruin your pen entirely so I would really stay away from those but any water based any water dye based fountain pen ink is going to be good for you in your in your pens. And that goes for, you know, even inks with more extreme properties like bulletproof or permanent inks. As long as they're intended for fountain pens, you will be okay. Um, it may take a little bit extra cleaning, um, but you, you, uh, you, your process will essentially be very similar to just a conventional ink. It just may require a little more cleaning when you do it. One thing I did want to point out is if you're going to be, if you know you're not going to be using a pen for a while, say you've got a pretty decent collection and you, you, you have too many pens to use or you're going to be kind of on a hiatus or traveling or something where you're not able to use your pens regularly, if you know that you're not going to be using your pen for a few weeks, maybe upwards of a month or more, I would recommend cleaning out your pen you know, drying it, uh, get, you know, leaving it empty and storing it that way. It's really not generally a good idea to store pens for long periods of time with ink in them because the water can evaporate out of the ink and you can be left with just the dried up dye left behind inside the pen and that can really be kind of a pain to clean out. So I'm going to take you through the basic process of how you clean just about any fountain pen. Now this pen that I'm using specifically is what's called a cartridge converter pen. And so the specific filling mechanism for this pen may be different than some of the ones that you have. But the process, the idea, the concept behind it is still the same. What you need to do when you're cleaning out your pen first is to get rid of all the old ink. If your pen is dry and you've run out, then you've already done that job. If you just get sick of whatever color you have and you want to move on to a different color, you can either dump the ink you have back into your bottle if you're comfortable doing that, or just dump it in, down the drain or whatever. Now, I don't have a sink right here where I'm filming, so I'm using two cups of water here. Um, when you're using uh, water to flush out your pen, generally, and just about every pen maker will tell you to use uh, distilled water. Generally it's a good idea to use distilled water. Now you don't have to, you can use tap water. The only problem with tap water is you may have minerals and contaminants and stuff in your water that over time is not the best thing for your pens. You have to determine if it's it's your own comfort level if you're okay using tap water or not. Any Anyone giving a recommendation will tell you to use distilled water because they don't know what kind of uh, situation your water is like. So I will say that to you here, use distilled water. But obviously you can do whatever you want. Um, they're your pens. So the first thing you want to do is if you're using cups apart from a sink, which sometimes you have to do that, um, it's good to have two cups. And the reason is because one is going to get really dirty. Um, so uh, when you're flushing and cleaning it, it's, uh, it's obviously going to get dirty. Now I've got ink left in the feed here and you can see the water I've pulled up into the converter is already pretty dark. And you can see there's ink in the water already. So basically all you're doing is you're just going to get ink into the pen and get it out. In this particular case I'm using the screw piston uh, converter to make that happen. You can also use a bulb syringe, uh, an ear bulb syringe like I've shown in one of my other videos. But basically, the concept of what you're doing is you're flushing clean water into it and expelling out the dirty uh, kind of just over and over again until you are 
seeing that the ink that it's much clearer now obviously the reason i have two cups of water here as you're expelling ink out into the water you're muddying up the very water that you're using to clean the pen so that is uh, only going to get it but so clean because basically all you're doing is diluting the ink that was in the pen into your body of water. Now if you have a sink what you can do is use a cup of water, get the, ink, the water up into the pen and then expel it down the drain and then you're not contaminating your clean cup of water so much. But alright I've done about as much as I can with this water here. So off to the side here outside of the video I have a roll of paper towels that I'm going to tear with one hand here. Paper towels are good because you can kind of touch the nib to it and you can blot out some of the extra uh, more, you can see here there's some darker lines of ink. That's more concentrated ink that's still left in that water. So you're kind of pulling, you're wicking the water out of that nib. So you do it until it's basically kind of dry. And then what I like to do after that is I like to switch over to my clean cup of water. Actually, i leave that one right there. Switch over to the clean cup and start drawing up some water. And in, in order to keep it super clean, I will expel it into my dirty cup so that I'm keeping this water much, much cleaner. Now keep in mind, even though it looks a little gray here, this is a black ink that was in here, even though it looks a little gray, this is some seriously, seriously diluted ink. Um, you're, you're talking fractions of a percentage of ink to water here uh, at this point. But even still, it's a good idea to get it until it's running completely clear. Now, as far as the temperature of the water goes, really all you need is room temperature. You can go maybe lukewarm or a little bit warmer if you want. It's not a good idea to use hot water because that can cause you problems with certain types of pens. Um, it can also, uh, it, with certain types of feeds, it can really cause you problems in terms of um, actually damaging the feeds to use hot water. Um, now, if you're, if you're uh, just doing regular maintenance with a conventional ink, this is going to pretty much do it for you. You can see here I'm blotting it out, and I'm basically just getting clear water. I'm not getting any uh, ink color like I was over here. So this would pretty much be good. I mean, for a, for a in-between the same ink filling, this was by far just fine. If I'm changing colors, I would feel pretty comfortable with the cleaning I've done here, changing colors. You could go a little more thorough if you want. Using a bulb syringe on the back is definitely going to help too, uh, to speed things up a bit. But that's basically all that's required with a normal ink filling. Now, if you want to go a little more aggressive, um, there's pen flush that you can get. JB's pen flush is one type. Um, there is a lot of old recipes and formulas and stuff out there for uh, pen flushes. Generally, the accepted formula has been distilled water, a little bit of dish soap, and maybe 10% uh, ammonia, household ammonia, which if you don't have ammonia, you can always just do the water and dish soap, and that'll kind of help. But if you want to flush, that will help to clear out your pen a little more aggressively. There are some inks like Noodler's Base State blue um, that are a little more prone to staining the inside of your converter. It's not a permanent stain. In those instances, um, a little bit of diluted solution of distilled water and maybe a 10% uh, household bleach will actually help to get that out. Now, of course, you have to determine if using a ammonia-based or a bleach-based uh, flush is a good idea for your specific pen. I would definitely try and do some research on your pen and see what the manufacturer recommends and whatnot, using it at your own discretion, of course. But those are some more aggressive chemicals you can use if you get to the point where you feel you need to do that. If you want to use a flush, what you would do is you would clean out your pen just like I did here. Then you get it basically as clean as you can. Then you do your flush after that and doing the same process that I just showed you here. Once you've done the flush, then you clean it again, just suck up some clean water, and you know, pump it in and out of the pen a few times, and then you're pretty much good to go. So if you're using flush, it's water, flush, water. That's your process. Hope this pen maintenance video was helpful for you. If you have any other questions about your specific pens or any other maintenance tips or really anything about fountain pens at all, feel free to email me at brian at Thanks so much for watching and write on.